Hello, this is Jason, and I'm back with some full self-driving in my Tesla Model 3. And since the last time I posted videos about this, it's been a few months ago, I would say that the full self-driving has greatly improved, and we'll see if it can uh, prove it to you in this video. Let's see if I uh, get a little better adjustment on seeing out the window and you can see the full self-driving layout here but it's pretty good and like before where i always had to like touch the steering wheel to make it know that i was paying attention there's a new like attentive feature where it sees if you're looking so it looks at the internal camera in the car and looks to see if you are looking and also when I had my vape out in my hand it said like that uh, you know attentive feature whatever I will see if it pops up again I forget what the name is but the, the feature has been disabled because I had a device in my hand even though it was a vape you know it didn't know if it was a phone or whatever so if you have anything in your hand and the camera sees you have something in your hand it will think you're being distracted and we'll kick that mode off and then it'll go back to the normal you have to touch the steering wheel or scroll the little volume scroll knob on the steering wheel just to let you know let it know that you're paying attention but if you actually are paying attention and looking out the window it sees that you're looking out the window and it won't nag you as much as it used to on touching the wheel so that's pretty nice So now it's saying apply slight force. So I, there's the first one. See how many times it asked me to touch the steering wheel. Because before it was like every minute it seemed like, touch the wheel, touch the wheel. It has gotten better. And it hasn't tried to kill me once. I've not had to like save myself before. Like on the last one, and that was only a few months ago. When I ran, ran it, like I had to intervene a lot. <laughs> like there was things where it was like pulling out in front of a car. It was, you know, it was gonna turn like in front of a car. So I had to intervene a lot and it actually caused my insurance to go up because my Tesla insurance is based on a safety score and it made me made my safety score go down because I had to intervene so many times. All right, here it's waiting for these cars. It's so cool, and to get it to take you home, it's so easy. Like on the navigation thing, you just like swipe down, and it automatically just goes to your home address. So getting home is a breeze. And it's doing all the lane changes and turns, stopping at lights, stopping at stop signs. It's doing great. And the price is now only $99 a month. So the full self-driving subscription has come down a lot. But I, I still, I don't drive enough to justify paying an extra $100 a month for something. But someone, if someone drives like every day, like this is the first time that I've drove my car for probably, I don't know, at least over a week. See, it says attention monitoring unavailable. So I was looking off to the side. So you have to keep looking out, out the window. And now, now that I'm looking out the window, in a minute it'll say attentive monitoring available. So that's what it's called, attentive monitoring. You have to be laser focused on the road or else it, it kicks that off. Apply, see now it's now it's nagging like every 30 seconds. And hopefully after it sees that I'm looking out the window for I wonder if it's because I'm talking too. I don't know everything that it looks for. I know 
for one thing it would be looking at my eyes and I have sunglasses on so it's probably hard to, to see my eyes yeah I'm getting a nag like every 30 seconds now please go back to attentive monitoring it's so much better There it is, attention monitoring active. So now it won't nag. And as long as I'm just laser focused out the window, that should not kick off. So don't turn your head and look somewhere else or pick anything up. Can't have anything in your hand. You just sit here, don't have to touch anything. Don't touch the steering wheel or pedals. I'm just here, here for the ride. I'm a passenger. And as long as I'm looking out the front window to be able to take over in case of emergencies or it tries to kill me in some way, it will just keep on driving for me. And no interventions. All I had to do was touch the scroll bar on the wheel when, when the attentive monitoring kicked off. And that was my fault for not looking out the window. So, as long as you're looking out the window, it just feels like you're a passenger in the car. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild. How good it is getting and it improved so much in just those last two or three months whenever the last free trial for, for full self-driving was and if they do that if they do this like every two or three months I'm fine with having full self-driving for like four months of the year for free keep giving me free months that's great <laughs> I'll use it when it's free And if I, if, so, if I was going to go on like a longer trip or something, I think now it's worth it enough that I'd pay $99 to have it drive me to Florida and back. And that's worth it. But especially if you, if you're a daily commuter, it's even more useful for like daily driving. If you're, well, we'll see if it. It's not gonna go. This car behind me is mad. I'm not intervening though. It, it could have made it in front of those other cars. And right now I could make it into the far right lane and it's not doing it. Now we have a green light. All right, go. Finally went. So not perfect. It aired on the side of being cautious. So that's better than pulling out in front of cars scaring me it, it signaled left like it was going to change lanes lanes and then it changed its mind I want to do a full complete no intervention and the last time I tried it like, uh, the, the full self-driving's actually been available for a month, and I didn't even use it, because just a couple months ago, it was so bad that it caused my insurance to go up. So I'm like, I'm not even gonna use it. Why? It took me two months to get my insurance back down to where it was. <laughs> but, I don't know, I just, I wanted to try it. The trial said it was ending soon. I wanted to try it just, to, just once to see if it's any better. And I was pleasantly surprised that it's noticeably better. And I actually want to turn here. I know it's... I am going to intervene just because there's construction up here on the, on the planned route. And I don't want to deal with the construction. So this is not a intervention for anything that the car is doing wrong. It's just that I know that normally that route that it wanted to go is the route that you would take 
but since there's construction over there that Google Maps doesn't know about it's uh it's better to go this way and now that I made the turn it's it knows right where to go so I'm not gonna count that as an intervention it didn't do anything wrong it just didn't know about construction zone backups Oh, squirrel! It didn't do nothing. <laughs> I don't think it even noticed that squirrel. Almost got that squirrel. I don't know if you guys saw it. Tesla was not going to slow down for a squirrel. He would have squashed it for sure. This is so cool though, living in the future. And my car couldn't do this when I bought it. I bought it, it'll be two years in January. So coming up on two years. And it's just so awesome that I bought a car two years ago and it has improved over time. My car is better now than when I bought it. Not many people can say that. Like all the over-the-air updates that it gets and it just applies it. Oh, it says it's unavailable. I was not looking out the window. It's <laughs> looking down at the screen. <clears throat> but I just think that's awesome. That your car can get better over time. And I would say that, like, it has depreciated quite a lot. I think the the last blue book value, it was saying it was like worth thirty, thirty three, thirty four thousand dollars. I have the base Model Three, twenty twenty three, and I paid like forty two for it. So that's already. But so that's a nine thousand dollar drop. But I got a seventy five hundred dollar tax rebate so that takes some of that out so it's really only fifteen hundred dollars of depreciation that's not bad if I could get you know the max value that like Kelly Blue Book says that I could get in the private sales so not too bad I've had much worse the Dodge Challenger that I drove for not even a year. I lost twelve hundred dollars or twelve thousand dollars on because it was a shaker edition. Oh, never buy a, a special edition of a car, especially if you plan to like trade it in, because it wasn't even in like Kelly Blue Book or their Black Book or whatever. They just give you whatever the base model is. No, up, oh, up. Oh, here's where it messes up. <laughs> so it's probably gonna tell me to take over. <laughs> There's no one coming, so I'm just going to let it freak out. But my house is three houses up. <laughs> I just want to see if it's able to figure itself out. No, no, it's not that house. <laughs> it's funny. So it has not got this part completely down yet. Let's see if it turns into my driveway. Nope. Nope, it opened my garage door. <laughs> All right, so it got me to my driveway. But see, when I get close to my house, it automatically opens my garage door. I don't have to push a garage door button like a caveman to open my garage door. It's automatic. So, pretty cool. And I think it did much better overall. So that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Take it easy.